For more on where the markets go from here, let's bring in David Rosenberg, founder and president of Rosenberg Research. David, great to have you with us. Um, you say it's silly season these days for the equity markets. Why is that? Well, I think it goes back to the comment uh, that was just made uh, about valuations. So uh, I understand the momentum aspect of this market and the technical aspect of it. And we can debate uh, the soft landing or hard landing. I would say that even if you have a soft landing or no landing view, uh, let's face facts. You have a, a 20 multiple on the S&P 500 uh, on forward earnings. Uh, that's a 5% earnings yield. And you can pick up 5.5%. Uh, in the treasury bill market with no cyclical risk, no duration risk, no capital risk. So I would say that, you know, when you do the math, uh, it's a very expensive market, no matter what your macro view is. Uh, and so when I'm talking about silly season, it's one thing to have a 20 multiple a couple of years ago when rates were at zero. Uh, but today, the equity risk premium has only been where it is today, less than 10% of the time in the past. Uh, so the valuations are extreme. Uh, I'm not going to say that they are dot-com level extremes, but we are in the top 10% of uh, valuation excess that we've had historically, and I think that's a that's a warning sign. How do you see this playing out then? It, it does seem like so many people are all of a sudden, you know, moving to the other side of the boat, so to speak, in terms of uh, soft landing scenario, no landing scenario. They're jumping on board. We see uh, strategists bumping up their price targets for the S&P 500 by year end. I mean, it just seems that all of a sudden everybody's getting really bullish just when you say silly season is starting? Well, I guess it's the uh, it's the benefit of having done this for 40 years. So you see what happens is that the market takes off uh, for whatever reason. Uh, and then you get the analysts and the economists and the strategists uh, then scurrying around trying to fit the narrative uh, into the price action. Uh, sometimes the stock market is going to do what it's going to do. You know, we go back to 2007, for example. I mean, nobody really had a recession in their forecast, and everybody was talking about, you know, where's the recession? We had the inverted yield curve. The lags are extremely long. Uh, and um, as we had uh, back then and as we had today, we had uh, a very expensive market on our hands. And at the same time, we had a ripping rally, uh, you know, from uh, the summertime of 07, to the October 9th high. The market absolutely ripped, and uh, everybody's scratching their heads. Of course, we know what happened next. Uh, and so sometimes people just fit the, the narrative uh, to the price action, because what else are you going to do? But we all know that the market is this malevolent beast, does not always respond to valuations. It's not a timing tool. It doesn't always respond to the fundamentals. Uh, it just sometimes takes a head of its own, and it's called animal spirits. The reason why the term animal spirits is around is because that's what happens when we have a momentum-based rally, which we've had for the past several months. I mean, the one thing I would like to ask the group is this, that when the Fed is cutting interest rates into a bear market, all you ever hear is, don't fight the Fed, don't fight the Fed, don't fight the Fed, and valuations matter, the market's cheap. But on the other side of the coin, you know, the Fed is tightening policy, uh, and they really haven't signaled that they're done yet. Um, and uh, it, you don't hear anybody saying, don't fight the Fed anymore. Uh, and now nobody talks about valuations. So it just Guy Adami the says it, Rosie. Um, but quick, quick question for you. In your note, you said discretionary spending in real terms barely expanded in Q2. And you talk about the market recognizing things and not. When we talk about a name like Disney or Starbucks or Nike, they're barely like up. They're unchanged on the year. The market is recognizing, I think, the fact that you're like kind of putting out here about discretionary spending. Will a recession be started by a consumer slowdown, even with the backdrop of the jobs picture, which seems kind of confounding, or might it start from something um, on the enterprise level? Uh, I think it's going to start at, at the consumer level, and I think that we'll see the first signs of this after the uh, the student loan forgiveness program uh, ends uh, in the coming month. Uh, and so I think that it's going to be it's going to be consumer led. I understand that, uh, you know, the frustration amongst uh, the bears. Uh, and, you know, I've been on this show before. And the question is, where is this recession already? Where is this recession already? But the thing is that interest rates do work their way through long lags. And what's happened this year, 100 percent true, we've had tremendous fiscal stimulus. Um, but that's going to term out before the end of the year. What's not going to go away uh, are the lags from these interest rate increases. And even if John Williams says, well, rates will come down next year, the question is by how much. 
The economy hasn't reset yet, and I did this work looking back historically. Only a handful of times has the Fed raised the funds rate 500 basis points or more in less than a year and a half. I mean, this is a significant rate shock, uh, and we haven't seen the full impact yet. But what I'm going to tell you is that after the 500th basis point increase in the funds rate, and it hasn't happened that often, okay, uh, it's six months till the recession. And in that six-month period, we're basically we're in purgatory. We don't know we don't we don't know where we are. And we're just asking questions. Where's the recession? But unless you believe interest rates don't matter in the most credit sensitive economy in modern history, uh, or you believe the business cycle has somehow been repealed uh, because we've had a year where fiscal policy did have an impact, it is not going to be big enough to offset the lags from these interest rate increases. Mm -hmm. So I think that by the third or fourth quarter, uh, we're going to start to see more evidence, but it's going to come out of the consumer side. Right. Uh, not the corporate side, but there will be spinoff effects. But this is going to be a consumer-led recession. I think will ultimately be more severe than people think in the 2024.